You've seen this show before. You know what's going to happen. Welcome back to the Skid Factory. If you've been watching for a while, you'll recognise this here, Super Cox. This used to be my trusty lawn tractor until we decided to hot rod it, extend the wheelbase, smash a huge one litre twin cylinder engine in it and generally make it not work. The problem we have is it needs to work because it's going to be one of the feature stars in an upcoming super cheap auto oils campaign. So we need power to go from there to here and at the moment it's all seamer under there and we can't seem to get it to work. So what we're going to do is maybe what we should have done in the first place and make the Super Cox the Super Yammer Cox 450. This trusty iron horse is a 2003 WR450. I bought this about five years ago to reinstate my hard enduro career. I spent a bit of time on my face but had a good time on it. I then moved it on and Woody bought it and he spent a bit of time in, in uh, intensive care. Intensive care. Um, it is an angry beast. It's got plenty of power and not much else, but uh, its spirit's gonna live on in the Super Yamacox. We're gonna do a heart transplant, rip its beating heart and place it in the Cox. The Cox Stockman is an Australian designed and built ride-on mower that's been in production since 1993. We swapped in a clutch destroying Kohler one litre V-twin engine, but we've never actually gotten all the power to the ground. As you can see, we did have a red hot go at making this work with a belt drive. Spent a fair bit of time under here making a clutch system and whatnot, and uh, sort of worked, but not for long. So we tried. Originally, we used the go-kart centrifugal clutch, but the V-twin produces too much torque and turned the clutch into smoke. A belt drive setup was then fabricated, which worked for about two minutes, but then proceeded to create smoke again. We looked into other options, such as a CVT setup, or even adapting a wet clutch to the Kohler engine, but instead, we're just going to start from scratch and use the engine from a WR450. Pro tip, mangled old Phillips head, can't get it undone. These things are your friend. You just grip the side, give it a hard clamp, you've got heaps of leverage now, and you can just loosen it. Happens all the time. Perfect for stupid stuff like Loctite on factory TPS bolts and stuff like that. Don't care about that. Don't care about that. Don't care about that. Never worked. Don't care about indicators. Kill switch. Probably a good idea. Keep that. How's your fingers? Yeah, I hit him with a hammer like three times. Ouch. <laughs> Got the engine out of the uh, WR450, came out relatively easily apart from seized up swing arm bits and stuff, nothing that a, a bit of a heat and a air chisel couldn't fix. 
uh, pretty standard for old dirt bike stuff. Uh, this is the engine, it's a 450cc, a single cylinder, five valve per cylinder. It's actually a pretty flash thing in its day back in 2003 when it came out. It's got titanium valves and all sorts of fancy stuff to allow it to rev really hard and make a fair bit of power for a bike. Uh, so it's got all the bits that we need, namely a starter motor. That's very handy when you've got a mower so you don't have to get off and kick it. Uh, it's got a clutch, a wet clutch, that is very hard to kill, which is a very important part of this project. Uh, it's got a six-speed gearbox, I think, which is probably a lot more than what we need, but whatever. So the next part of the job, uh, I've mounted it already, just a couple of little brackets made out of box steel and stuff. It's pretty straightforward. It's half the size of the other engine, so there's plenty of room for it. Next, we've got to get the drive from the gearbox here. That's the sprocket coming out of the box. That would normally just go to your back wheel on your bike. But in this case, we can't go through the middle of our legs, so we've got to go down under into the, the safe zone underneath the, the mower, so when stuff breaks, it doesn't cut our legs off. Uh, so it's got to go down. We're going to have to have some idler shafts. So one idler there to change directions, and then another one that goes out to the original chain drive to the back wheels. So I've got a hole, chain can go down through here, we'll put some idlers in, weld some stuff, things will go everywhere and it'll work at the end of the day, hopefully. The WR450 uses a 5 8 pitch chain, which we're shortening to join up with an idler sprocket that's mounted on a 3 quarter inch shaft. The shaft is held in place by some bearing supports mounted on each side of the mower chassis. A half inch pitch chain is then being used to transfer the power to the rear wheels by another axle. This keeps the chain under the chassis away from fingers, feet or... Sprockets are usually mounted using a keyway, but due to time restraints, we weren't able to source any keyway shafts, nor did we have any time to machine our own, so we're resorting to the welder. In theory, this can create a weak point next to the weld, but we're hoping that the 450 won't produce enough power to snap a 3 quarter inch shaft. With the drivetrain sorted, Al moves on to the mystery motorbike loom. From factory, Yamaha combined four kill switches to comply with Australian design rules which can cause some confusion when rewiring the engine to suit a lawnmower. Luckily, Al's no stranger when it comes to weird Japanese wiring looms, so after a quick twitch and tape, we're able to give the mower a test start to make sure we're on the right track.
That's some good oil pressure. Do you want to clamp on that? That's probably just going to pop off again, eh? Got the change eye all sorted in theory. Now we need to get it started and see if it actually works in practice. I've pulled apart the wiring loom, deleted some stuff. There's not many diagrams around that actually mean anything, but uh, we've just sort of fiddled around and see if it works. We got spark, so we should be able to fire it up now. We've got oil pressure. <laughs> got oil pressure because it's spurted all over the workshop, so um, no need for a gauge. At least it, at least it's got a clutch that's not. It's got a clutch. Yeah, this feel off. Thanks, Maxi. Cheers for that, dude. All you need is some dishwashing soap, and it's a real bubble maker. It sounds horrible. <laughs> we wanted to get the mower running. One to test the chain drive to make sure it's going to work, and two to test out the mystery motorbike wiring. We didn't know what was going to go on with that. We got Spark, we got it running, that's all good. We've got three days left until this has got to be on set for the oils campaign. And oil is one thing we do need for the mower, so we're going to pop into Super Cheap Auto and grab some essential supplies. Race pack for the race mower. I'm not sure that the vehicle was designed for this. Dropped into Super Cheap for some supplies to get the mower done. While we were there, we grabbed an OBD reader. Two, actually. You can win these. All you gotta do is comment below and tell us what you would repower the Supercox with if it was yours. Make it realistic and tell us why it's a good idea. If you say LS1 or Barrett, you're not gonna win. If you've got a Volkswagen, I recommend that you get on this. This is gonna be really handy for you. Let's get back to the Cox and get it done. The WR450 radiators were bent like a banana, so we're using some fresh KTM ones instead. Some alloy mounts are made in the lathe, which can then be welded to a couple of brackets that will hold the radiators in place so we can keep the Super Yamacocks cool when we're smashing it around in a paddock. Say it. Do it. It's not going anywhere? <laughs> or is it? <laughs> Damn! Don't get Woody to service your bike. Hey, why me? <laughs> this was yours. Look at it. I'm gonna blame Kai. Look at it. Freshy. If you're servicing your motorbike at home, be sure to check what type of oil to use. 
The WR450 is a four-stroke engine that uses a wet type clutch which uses the oil to cool and lubricate the clutch packs. Using the incorrect type of oil will damage the clutch and possibly the transmission. Recycling parts is one of Owl's many traits. This oil cooler was previously cooling a transmission on a 500 horsepower turbo V8, but now gets to live on and assist with cooling the Super Yamacox 450. Some Raceworks AN fittings and Dash 6 braided line transfer the oil from the engine block through the oil cooler and back into a reservoir. Not a bad addition to the Cox if I do say so myself. We have the Supercox all sorted, but not before I kick this in the butt one last time. We hooked up that front mount oil cooler and it almost exploded before we realised that we needed a reservoir and a breather for the dry sump tank to work. We should have known better. We, we should have used our brains and thought about it more, but it is what it is. And also the water pump is got, it's got a leaking seal, so that's a later day fix. Maybe we can call 1300 kit and he can come service it for us. That's all done. We're about to go for the maiden voyage. We've got one last day until the Super Cheap Auto Oils campaign's being filmed. This is gonna be on set there, so we're not gonna go give it a hiding. We're just gonna go make sure the clutch actually works, make sure the cox moves, and then at a later date, maybe we can set up some kind of race between Alan and myself on a, on a, on a track somewhere. You know you're alive, you could feel it in your bunghole. <laughs> we say about not thrashing it? <laughs> Makes some gnarly horrible noises but it goes. Al went hard for the maiden voyage and this thing is looking good. The clutch works, it sounds good, it hauls ass and we're ready to go film with Super Cheap Auto for the best performing oils campaign 2023. What you need to do is tune in tomorrow as the ad's coming out, you know they make good ads every year. They go above and beyond. This year, there's a bunch more cameos, famous YouTubers, famous DJs, V8 supercar drivers. It's absolutely awesome. Check it out tomorrow on YouTube, Super Cheap Auto's YouTube channel. The link's in the description. Thanks for watching this build. It's been really cool. I'm looking forward to actually thrashing this thing and maybe having a race with Al. Thanks again to Super Cheap Auto for the support. I'm spitting everywhere. 
We'll see you guys next time. Cheers. <laughs> pa! Audio check. Number one. Oh, that's a good one. <laughs> we make our own sounds here at the Skid Factory. <laughs> cut away. It is a cut away for the mangled pipe. Dropped it on a rock. <laughs> Maybe that oil cooler was okay. It... Did it blow the hose? Blew, off, blew the side out of it. Of the hose? Yeah. Maybe the oil cooler was okay, but it just blew the side out of the oil cooler. <laughs> Look at that oil pressure gauge up. How much oil pressure do you want, bro? What you gonna say? That's right. It's not a piece of hose. It's professional. You want these ones? <laughs> Tell me you're old without telling me you're old. I don't need to tell you, you know I am. <laughs>